good morning. So glad to see everyone this morning. Good morning. So glad to see everyone this morning. Hope everyone is having a good, beautiful Sunday morning. I've seen some faces I haven't seen in quite a while, so it's good to have everyone back. Um, so glad that Easter Sunday we got to celebrate that Jesus is alive, but we still get to celebrate that today, and we're so happy for that. Um, if you're joining us online, again, welcome. If you're on Facebook, please leave a comment. Uh, let us know that you're here, and we would be uh, so glad to connect with you. Uh, if you're in person, uh, we have uh, little slips there in the pews that you can fill out. Um, you can fill those out. That's um, where you can share a prayer need. We would love to pray with you this morning, um, and we believe in the power of prayer. If you're online, there's a spot on our website, centerbaptist.com slash prayer request. We would love to pray with you there. Um, for giving this morning, we have our offering bo boxes out front. Um, if you would like to give, they are out there. If they're online, uh, there's a place, centerbaptist.com slash give. You can, get, can give on our website. Uh, just a reminder, we still have our joint Lottie Moon and Annie Armstrong offering going on. Uh, so if you would like to give to that, um, it's a great miss missions outreach. So, uh, and they would be so, so blessed by that. Um, Thank you again to all who went to the Victory Home we had um, over the past week, and I know that was such a blessing. I don't think Miss Carol was here to share, um, but I know uh, she is so appreciative of everyone who brought food, um, and it was just, I know, a great time for them to be back. Uh, tonight, Pastor Michael will be starting a revival at White Creek Baptist that's just off the Webster Lake Road, um, so if you would like to come to that, um, I know he would be so blessed by the support. Um, so if you'd like to come to that, it starts at 6 tonight, uh, and then Monday through Friday, it starts at 7. And also, I'd like to mention, there's a prayer room that um, if you'd like to, some guys would like to come and pray, uh, it starts at 5.30 tonight before the service, and then also it starts at 6.30 um, the rest of the, the week, so Monday through Friday. Um, again, so glad everyone's here. Wednesday night, we will be back to normal services at 6.30. We have something for all ages. Um, so we would be so, so glad for you to come and connect with us. Um, again, it's good to have everyone back. I'm going to pray for us. Brother Jimmy's going to come and lead the worship, and Pastor Michael's going to come up and preach. So let me pray for us. Lord, thank you, Lord, that we can come before you and, and uh, come into your house this morning and, and know that we don't have to just stop at Easter to celebrate that you're alive. We can still celebrate it today, God. I pray to be with Brother Jimmy as he comes and brings the uh, music, God. I pray to prepare our hearts for worship. I pray to be with Pastor Michael as he brings the message this morning. And as he brings the message this week during revival, God, just fill him with your Holy Spirit. Move him on this place this morning. Pray that if there's anyone here who doesn't know you, that they might not leave this place the same way that they walked in. I pray to prepare our hearts this morning. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's being said, it's a, a pleasure to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. And what a beautiful day we have. And, and I've noticed that we've got a, a lot of our members that uh, had not been here in a while, and we're just so glad to have them back. So. Our first song this morning is going to be Footsteps of Jesus. Sweet little Lord, He ain't calling, come follow me. Die! 
on the sparrow but his eyes is always on us
I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sun. I know he watches me. You may be seated. Struggling this week to seek uh, what message, and um, we'll have it back. And I enjoy doing that. I want you to be able to have that. But it's also good to have your Bible. So I encourage you, bring your Bible, have it with you. But today, um, as I told Miss Allison um, when I text her, I just I, I, I don't like not knowing. And I had uh, been praying over a passage that I felt like exactly where God wanted me to go. Then Tuesday, that changed. And then, early one morning, we had, like others, had taken just a little time for spring break. And I'm an early person, uh, particularly when we're staying somewhere that's got... Now, it used to be when I was younger and Michael was younger, it was all about the amenities. Me now... If they've got 24-7 coffee, they've got me. I mean, I'm just telling you, they're pretty excited about that. And it was early one morning on the balcony, and I just began to pray and ask God, what is a word for me, for our church? I told Courtney, as she got up and came out later on, and sat with me, and I said, I think I know now, but I, I don't want to preach it. It's very personal, and it's uh, to the heart of where I know I have been and where I still am allowing God to work through, and it could be where you were at. I don't know, but we'll see. I'm just asking God to speak to us this morning. Would you, would you just pray that with me? Lord, just, just speak to me. Don't let me worry about who's else around us, who's not here, what's going on. Just speak to me and show me what you have for me in my heart. This is actually before Easter, the passage we'll look at. It is Peter, really, the night before. I love Peter. I love studying about Peter. And the reality is this Phrase that I'm looking at has gripped me for months. And God brought it to my attention early this week. It's found in verse 31. I didn't tell you that until just now, did I? Luke 22, verse 31. It begins, but where we'll really take our thought, we'll find ourselves in verse 54 and following. Luke chapter 22 beginning in verse number 31. And if you uh, are physically able, I know you've been standing to sing, but would you stand with me as we read God's word together? And let me say with Ben, thank you for being here. My, what a great attendance. It's so good to see folks that have been out back. It's good to see visitors I've met this morning. Thank you. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. And I pray you still love me when you leave today. Amen. <laughs> Luke 22, verse 31. Jesus, looking at Simon, says this, Simon, Simon, 
It's a point of attention. That's why he's saying it twice. He, he wants to emphasize, Peter, I want you to listen. I, I've really got something to say to you. Look out. Satan is asked to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And you, when you have turned back, <laughs> strengthen your brothers. Lord, he told him, I'm ready to go with you both to prison and to death. I tell you, Peter, he said, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied me three times that you know me. Go to verse 54. After they had went to the garden and now the, the, the guards have come to get Jesus, verse 54 says they seized him, led him away, and brought him into the high priest's house. And here's the passage I want you to pay close attention to. Meanwhile, Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together and Peter sat among them. When a servant saw him sitting in the firelight and looked closely at him, he said, this man was with him too. But he denied it. Well, when I don't know him, after a little while someone else saw him and said, you're one of them too. Man, I am not, Peter said. About an hour later, another kept insisting this man was certainly with him since he's also a Galilean. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Immediately, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Then the Lord turned and looked at Peter. So Peter remembered the word of the Lord how he had said to him before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. From a distance. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for the worship this morning. Thank you for the sweet time we have had already here in your house, God, of, with fellowship and just being able to be here, God, with the folks. God, what a blessing. And to see folks here, what an absolute blessing. But I just ask you right now, as only I, I know how to do, just to say, Father, here I am. Use me as your vessel. Speak to me and through me. Do a work in the heart of these, your people. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You might be seated. From a distance. If you're around my age or older, you know that to be a title of a song by Bette Midler in the 90s. One of the famous lines is, God is watching us from a distance. So often many feel that way, and particularly what we have walked through in the past year and a half, many still wonder, uh, is that true? God's just watching us from a distance. But the reality is, God is not just at a distance, God is near. The reality is God desires to be near. God is not a creative God that created us and then walked away from His creation. As a matter of fact, you'll read in Genesis when He created Adam and Eve, the Bible said He walked with them in the cool of the evening. The Bible said that God wanted a relationship with man. I want you to hear me. He so wanted a relationship with man. He knew that in his holiness and man's sinfulness, there was no way that man could be good enough to get to him. So he sent his only begotten son that through Jesus Christ, God with us, who came to live among us, to live a sinless life, died upon the cross. There was a veil in the temple that separated man from God. Only one man a year could go in there. And even then, it was only once a year that temple was, that veil was torn in two, signifying that because of Jesus, God is saying again, draw near to me. I want you to have access to me. I am a God who is near. 
The Bible says often that if we'll draw near to God, He will draw near to us. Revelation 3 is Jesus standing at the door and knocking. It's not just for lost people. It's for saved people. When He says, open the door and I will come and I will eat with you and we will fellowship together. Are you hearing me? God is not a God that's distant. God is a God that's near. Once we get saved and trust in Jesus... We are called to pursue Him the way He pursued us. Philippians 3, Paul said, I've been apprehended by God. I've been apprehended by Christ. Those of you that played football know what that word means. You just don't know it's a biblical word. It means to pursue that, that running back and to lock him up and bring him to the ground. I don't know about you, but that's exactly what Jesus Christ did to me. He locked me up, held me close, took me down, but didn't leave me there, brought me up, saved my soul, lives inside of me. And Paul says, with the same passion, Jesus pursued me. I want to pursue Him. I want to go after Him. I want to make it the goal of my life to go after Him. But the reality is we're human. And the hard truth is, God never moves, but we do. It's the old preacher joke of the older couple driving down the road and they were sitting in the, one of those trucks that had the, the bench seat where you know, there was no middle part where they could slide back and forth and the wife's over there at the window. The, he's obviously driving by the window and she said, Honey, we don't sit close together like we did when we were first dating and married. I mean, we'd sit, I'd sit right up there next to you when we was driving. He looked over and said, Who moved? You know what God's saying to us when we're saying, God, you're distant? God's saying, who moved? Yes. He wants to be, but we're human. And we find ourselves not only watching from a distance, but walking at a distance. I want you to hear me. I am not talking about lost people when I'm talking about Peter. I want you to hear me. If you're lost, obviously you're distant. Obviously, you are not connected with God. You cannot be except through Jesus Christ. That's what makes the gospel so amazing. That you can be saved. And you can know Him. And you can walk with Him. You know, I thought about, I'm going to go ahead and say this because it's in my heart. We, we get so consumed about what people think about us. On social media, how many likes I get. And if you're not even on social media, it's what you're wearing and what you're living and what you're doing. But we sometimes forget that the sovereign God of heaven likes us so much he gave his son for us if nobody else likes you God does amen, amen. amen. but yet we often feel distant we often find ourselves as Christians being distant not as a lost person no, I'm not talking about losing your salvation I'm not even talking about forsaking him I'm not even talking about the folks that are saved that are not in church Matter of fact, think with me. Peter was one of the twelve. Let's go a step further. He was part of the inner circle. If Peter can find himself walking in a distance, only by the grace of God goes Michael Willis. But stay with me. I don't want to throw stones at Peter because listen what happened. He said, I'll, I'll not deny you, Lord. I'll stand with you. Even if they take us to jail, I'll die with you. And they carried him off. And everybody left but him and John. At least he kept his eyes on Jesus. At least he said, I'm willing to follow him. I'm willing to fight for him. But yet he still did so at a distance. So, so you hear what, I want to draw in from it. Please hear me. This is not a message for folks that are saying, I've forsaken the Lord. I've forsaken the house of God. I've forsaken the word of God. No, this is not for folks that are not saying, I will stand for Jesus. I believe in Jesus. No, this is for those that are saying, yes, I'm following him. I see him, but I'm just walking at a distance. It's just not as intimate as it once was. It's, it's just not as real as it once was. It's, it's just not as passionate as it once was. And I find myself in a place that I never thought I would find myself doing things I never thought I would do. I'm here this morning. I'm watching online. But if I get good level honest, there's a distance. 
Where are you with Jesus right now? What is your relationship with him today and in this season? What causes distance? I want you to look at Peter. Now we're going to, I can't hit everything because I don't know what all you might be going through. Because I will say this, you either are in the middle of this, coming on the other side of it, or you're coming into it. We all have seasons. So I'm not here beating anybody up. I'm here to exhort and to encourage to say, take a long look and see where are you and where can you be when you leave this place. So what causes it? So I've studied it. But I'm telling you, early that morning and late into the night, God just began to reveal so many things. And I'm just going to walk through it very quickly, very calmly. Because, I listen, I don't want you to hear how I say it. I want you to hear what God gave me to say. For Peter, it was, number one, a wrong motivation. When you look over here in chapter 22, right before he told him he was going to deny him, they'd had a battle about who was the greatest. They were looking around going, you know, there's a bunch of people not even following Jesus. Matter of fact, when we started this journey three and a half years ago, there's a lot of them following him, but when Jesus got to do some hard teaching, they left. Look around, boys, we stuck it out. But look around us. Who y'all think when all this is all the dust settles on this thing, who's gonna be the top dog? Look at me. They were not just following Jesus because they thought he was going to the cross. They were following Jesus because they thought he was going to defeat Rome and they'd get to give a crown and a... And a how do you know? Because listen to the, the language all the way through the Gospels. They didn't get it. What can I get out of it? What did he tell Peter when Peter said, No, Lord, don't go to the cross. He said, Peter, you're minding the things of the world and not the things of God. You know what's amazing? I don't know anybody's motivation. And you don't know mine. Oh, you may think you do, but you don't. Because that's between us and God. But guess what God's going to judge when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ? Our motivation. It's not going to be, did we do a lot? It's, why did we do a lot? What is it for? And Peter had wrong motivation. Number two, Peter was arrogant. Peter said, Lord, I will never deny you. Mark said he was vehement. He almost got angry at the Lord. And then he made a statement that shows not only his arrogance, but his, his selfishness and self-righteousness. They may leave you, but I won't. Wow. Peter's self-confident boasting is a warning to all of us. Peter's courage and boldness was a strength. You hear people all say this, you'll trip up on your weakness. It may not be. sin when you start thinking well I'm in church I'm reading my Bible I won't do those things I won't deny the Lord it can happen in a moment his heart the Bible says often with our lips we say one thing but our heart is far from me and by the way you can hide pride sometimes with a false humility I'm telling you, pride says it's everybody else's fault. Humility says I need to take a look at my own doorstep. You ever notice that? Hey, by the way, if you got problems with everybody else, it might be time to check up your mirror. I mean, if you're daily going around going, everybody's a mess but me, praise God. There might be a problem. Like the, like the grandfather who got into that stinky cheese, that, that whatever that, Muzz Burgers, I don't know what you call it, that stinky cheese. Got in his mustache. We'll Google it later and you can make fun of me. I don't know what it is. 
I just remember the story. He goes and takes a nap after he eats the cheese. Wakes up and goes, this room stinks. What's up with this room? Goes out to the hallway there upstairs. The kids are playing around, the grandkids. He said, y'all stink. This whole place up here stinks. Goes in the kitchen where his wife is cooking stuff for the grandkids. This kitchen stinks. Then he walks outside and said, my goodness, the whole world stinks. <laughs> Who had the issue? <laughs> All I'm saying is if you're constantly critical, that's not God. No, it's not. It's not Jesus. And if everybody else has the problem, that's not Jesus. That's pride saying, I'm okay. It's just everybody else. Number three. He was willing but worn out. He went to the garden with Jesus to pray, but he couldn't keep his eyes open. Let's don't beat him up. He was worn out. The Bible says they couldn't keep their eyes open for sorrow. Look at word sorrow means depressed. One of the great things that I believe in this season that has caused distance with God's people is depression, sorrow, overwhelm, and just flat out tired. It can happen. Life gets busy. The world keeps spinning. And you don't even mean to, but the next thing you know, you're still serving, you're still reading your Bible, you're still coming to church, but you're like, something shifted. And I don't even know what it is. And you just check and go, well, I'm just tired. I've just had enough. But I want to tell you something God put in my heart. So was the Lord Jesus Christ. He literally fell under the weight of it all. But he kept praying. Well, he was God. and the, Yes, he was, but he was still a human being. And that's why he said to Peter, Peter, I know you're tired. I know you're worn out. But you don't know what I know. You don't know what I see in front of you, Peter. I know you don't feel like praying, but get on your knees, son. I know you wore out and exhausted, but bring it to Jesus. Can I just say something about that song? When you feel like hope has died, don't run away and get distant. Make a beeline to Jesus, because that's where hope is found. Amen. It's a step away. It's a step away. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Number four, he was driven by emotion. The Bible says right after this, when he told them he was going to deny him, they went to the garden and prayed. Then all of a sudden the soldiers came. Peter, we, we find out in John, is the one with the sword. And he cut off the servant's ear. I like what Warren Wiersbe said. I don't think he was aiming for the ear. I just think he missed. <laughs> yeah. What would cause Peter at that point? Think about it. It's all built up now. The one he's serving is telling him he's going to die, go crucify. That messes his head because that's not what he had planned. He's been arrogant about it going, I won't deny him, but man, that other group has left. I see somebody needs to fight. Somebody needs to do something. So moved by emotion, he cut. Jesus didn't say, Peter, grab your sword and fight for me. Matter of fact, he looked at Peter and says, Peter, don't you know? I could have 10,000 angels fight for me right now, but you're fighting the wrong fight, Peter. Look at me. When you're driven by emotions, you'll fight everybody but the real fight. You'll fight everybody but the real fight. And that's a spiritual warfare that we need to fight. Peter was, was he got mad. He even got mad that Jesus healed the man. These are some things I don't know. But these are some things in Peter's life and I know they spoke to me in my life. What does it cause when we allow it to stay distant? Again, we're grateful Peter went, but look what happened. The Bible says when he got there, even though he's walking at a distance, he sat by the fire. He began to have conversations and he denied the Lord. Three things I want to give you. When you stay distant, you end up in places you shouldn't be with people that you shouldn't be hanging out with doing things you would never have done. 
in a place he shouldn't be. Well, it's not that he shouldn't follow Jesus, but he should have went on in. The Bible said in John's gospel, John knew somebody in the court, got him in, but Peter didn't go in. He stayed outside. Was it he didn't feel worthy? Was it I don't know. But he stayed out there, and because he did, he was in some places he shouldn't have been. I don't know if you've been places you shouldn't be. I don't have a preacher cam on my cell phone. I mean, it's like this one guy one time tried to keep so much up with his church when they'd go to the movie house or, you know, movies. He didn't like it because he thought they was going down there watching Hollywood. So he went and took their license plates down on Saturday night, got back on Sunday morning, called them all out. They showed him. They rode with different people next week. It's my job to police you. I don't know what's going on in your life. I know when he does. I know when he quickens my heart. You end up being with people you shouldn't be with. What you're saying, preacher? I need to be. Hang- yeah, you need to be around lost people, but not going. I tell you what, I believe I go hang out with them while they're partying, and somewhere there, I'll tell them about Jesus. Ain't gonna happen, son. Because see, people will sway us. Peter was by himself, and he felt the pressure, didn't he? And he caved. I'm not here to throw rocks at anybody. We've all listen. If we're gut level honest we have been right where Peter's been and we could have said a word for the Lord I mean, Peter tell him about the, him opening the blinded eyes Peter tell him about the 5,000 Peter tell him about Lazarus they've given you an opportunity Peter you said you'd go with him but you're distant and when you're distant your courage fails when you're distant, it becomes about self-preservation more than Christ's exaltation. You ended up doing things you never thought you would do. Peter, when he said, I'll not deny you, he meant it. I believe that. I really do. I believe he meant it with everything within him. But when pressed at a distance... He denied the very one who had set him free. But everybody draw in. It's Paul Harvey that I used to love to listen to. Let me tell you the rest of the story. Because if we left it right here, wow, I'd leave discouraged and depressed. God, I've been there. I've lived this. But a couple things. Number one, The rooster did crow and it reminded Peter. Peter remembered what God said. If you go down this road, if you do this, this is what's going to happen. Peter goes, he was right. But I love Luke's gospel. The only gospel that tells us this. As soon as the rooster crowed, at some or another through the vantage point, we're not told how, Jesus caught eyes and locked in with Jesus. Or with Peter. You know what I think? I don't think it was a disapproving eye. It was the eye of a loving Savior. This says, I want you to know, Peter, you may not have me on your mind, but you're on mine. You may not have me on your mind right now, Peter, but you've never left my Peter. And I almost believe the Lord was saying, Peter, please don't just remember that word I told you. Remember when I told you that you would be sifted by Satan. But when you turn back, strengthen the brethren. One writer put it this way, I've never thought about it. That rooster crowing, yes, was a, an omen, a reminder of a sin, but it was also a reminder of a new day. Peter... God's the God of second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth chances. You've been distant. But Peter, don't stay there. So what did he do when when the Lord saw him? Same thing you and I should do when he he sees us. Everybody look at me for a second. What I prayed so hard for is this. That if you are distant, 
You will not see me, but you will see the face of Jesus reminding you of his love for you, reminding you of what it's like to be near him and be reminded that it's the new day that God has given you to run back to him. Because here's what I know. The world will tell you, hey, let's go have fun. By the way, the prodigal son, he lived it up. You know why? Sin's fun. Look, you know, I mean, look at all the beer. When I was a kid, I didn't like beer commercials. I would stick fingers in my ear and go, no, 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 no. I don't know where. I guess Daddy preached a lot of, I don't know. I just didn't, didn't like them. But you see him, boy, hey, party time. But they don't show you the stuff afterwards. Hey, party time, I'm going to live what I want to. It is fun for a season. But just like everything that costs you, there's a debt coming due. Everybody look at me. The, the joy you feel at that moment is not lasting. It's just not. The euphoria you look for, the, the peace you're looking for, it's not lasting. But with Jesus, when you're in line with him, wow, nothing can beat that peace. Nothing can beat that joy. <laughs> can I just say something? When you're distant, you're not joyful. You don't feel like celebrating. But man, when you get right with Jesus and you start lining up with him, I just believe Jesus was a joyful person. Amen. He had sorrow, but for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, set down at the right hand of the Father. I just think people like, I think, and so for me, as God has worked me over, and I'm still not there yet, please hear me, but I feel like I'm taking some steps in the right direction. I want to celebrate again. Did y'all know there's some of the prettiest river scenery going up the mountain from Gatlinburg to Pigeon Forge? I've been going there for 45 years. And a lot of times I never see it. You know why? Because by the time I get to the bottom of that mountain, I'm already thinking about everything that's facing me when I get back across. I blew my family away this week. Because I'm all about time. And I had a, um, my cousin's wife asked last night, she goes, who are you racing? I said, myself. I got personal bests. <laughs> if you think I'm lying, I'm not. I will look according when we get to Sugar Land, I go, two hours, 45 minutes, that's quicker than last week. I'm serious. I, I don't want to be that. Why, why, why? So we're driving up the mountain. And I'm like, man, the river's beautiful today. I'm like, beautiful. The next thing you know, I'm, I'm pulling off at the chimneys. Go through the picnic area. Courtney goes, what are you doing? I was like, it's all right. I'm good. I was going to look at the river. She said, you do what? I said, roll your window down. I want to look at the river. So when she went, Michael's in the back. said, that's what she's doing. She looked at she and then I look at Michael and I said, hey, when we get to the top, I will stop, turn the car off, and let you look at the mountain. Let me tell you why that's a big deal. When we go across the mountain, I got two things, my time limit and pancakes on the mind because we're eating there. We leave the house at 6 o'clock so I can be sitting there eating. When I sat down, that waitress said, honey, you know what you want? I said, sweetheart, I knew what I wanted at 5.30 this morning when I left Cleveland. It's the truth. Two years ago, we're going across the mountain. Beautiful. Clouds right there. The valley was awesome. Sun coming up. I mean, it was beautiful. She said, Daddy, can I stop? I said, look, there's nobody in front of me. We're doing great time. You got five seconds. I know, that's not right, right? That's what I did. Here's my daughter in her sock feet. Out there trying to get a picture. And I said, hey, hey, hey. I see five cars coming. You got to get it. You got to get it. That's terrible. I didn't celebrate in life. Let's give you from one point to the next. And you want to join Crofty and watch my wife, my daughter, take a picture while I was way away in a safe place while they were hanging off that rail? I said, celebrate my God.
deserve him to think about me. I don't deserve, I have failed him and walked away and been distant and been, been a wreck. And don't deserve for him to think about me. But even when I'm not thinking about him, he's thinking about me. And then when Peter says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and go fishing. Guess who showed up? Jesus. Can I tell you something? He's going to keep pursuing you. You think you've blown it. He doesn't care. That's the wrong picture of Jesus. He's going to keep showing up. He's going to keep pursuing you. Because he wants more for you. Amen. He wants to spend time with you. It's not so up there with life. I mean, that's, that's why I can't ever be in that position. Because I've been going live with folks up there tonight. Because I deserve more. Jesus said, I'm going to give you mercy. Now, that doesn't mean excuse the sin. No, no, no. First John 1 John 1.9 says, I confess my sin. He said, I'm just forgiving the sin. It cleans me from all my righteousness. Not only that, but Jesus steps in, but Peter steps towards him. He remembered the promises of God. He remembered the new day he was given. He wept before the Lord. And he came back to Jesus. I'm done, but I want you to hear me real close. The song, Casting Crown Sings, One Step Away. As I was thinking about this passage, it came to me. And I listened to it, but I also listened to the behind the, the story. His premise is, it's not really a long step that gets us distance. It's just a step away. But guess what else it is? It's just a step away to get back. You're thinking, I'm so far away. I've, I'm so far away, I can't get back. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a step away. <laughs> just step toward Jesus. But let me tell you what he said. I thought this was awesome. Please listen. Everybody draw in. He said, what happens to us when we realize we're distant from God, we try to go back to the person we were when we were closer. He said, so we fight and we strive to live like that person so we can feel what we felt and experience what we experienced. When the reality is, don't try to be who you were. Just run to Jesus. And let him make you who you are right now. Stay with me. Amen. Three and a half years before this, he said to Peter, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Spent three and a half years with him. Denies him. When he comes back to that fire that day, he didn't look at Peter and says, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. He said, no, no, Peter. I'm going to give you a fresh work. You've been through a lot. Because guess what happens when the devil sifts you? If we'll let God have his way, God, listen, God will never, call, uh, uh, will not tempt us to cause us to stumble like Satan. He will, he will try us to cause us to stand. And if we'll let him in the process, he will mold us and shape us that we'll come out stronger than we were. And he looked at Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Quit trying to be the person you were and just be the person you are right now in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You can't go back. We're doing a lot of moving around at our house. And we moved the curio cabinet. I said, boy, that thing stayed there for a long time. Courtney said 17 years. And when we pulled it back, we realized it had been sitting in that same spot for 17 years. She has these little ceramic figurines. Started with a baby, then one year old, two year old, three year old, for Michael. Every year she would get from her birthday. And then there's the one for graduation. And she's pulling them out, putting them in the basket to take downstairs. We were going to. And I was messing with Michael, and I said, well, they're going to storage. <laughs> that was not funny. But. So we took the curio cabinet to display when you walk in the entrance. And I was sitting there thinking in my mind as you were pulling all those out and we're getting ready to go downstairs, my, how the years have gone quickly. And in my mind, I've been at this journey a long time. I want to go, let me go back to that 21-year-old guy who just started pastoring. Let me go back to that 17-year-old guy who who just surrendered a call to preach and was on fire for God. Let me go back to that 30-year-old pastor when he just came to center and was full of vision. I can't. Neither can you. I tell you what I can do. Lord, here I am right now. 
and you've walked me through some things. And I'm not where I was, but I'm certainly a lot further down the road than I was. So here I am. I want to take a step towards you. Use me where I'm at. I don't have a cute story or a heartbreaking story to say this or to draw you to the altar. I don't have that today. Because what I prayed is, God, you draw your people to the altar. I know this. For me and for any of us that find ourselves in that place, we need some weeping once again about our condition before God. We don't need to be complacent and just say, it's just where I'm at, it's just the season. No. Stop it right now. Stop the, 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 the drain and, the, and the, the shifting. Say, no, Lord. Today, I see you. Today, I'm here. And here I am. And I'm not getting up until this is right. Take a step towards Jesus. You know what happened? He will meet you right there. If you've never been saved, your prayer is, God forgive me of a sinner. I need to be saved. If you're watching online, I need to be saved. But listen, if you're here this morning, you're saved and you're distant. Don't leave here distant. I pray, Lord, what would be a word for us in this season? Distant. We're distant. And it happens, doesn't it? So God. And then you start going, well, boy, preacher, you need to get people fired back up for Sunday school. You need to get people fired back up to serve when we get started. No. Because if we'll just get fired up by Jesus, all the other will come. Amen? Amen. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Brother Jimmy's going to come with a hymn of invitation. I'm going to pray, and then the altar will be open. And I'm going to invite you to get your physically able to literally come to the altar, to the pew, to chairs, however you can, where you are, make it an altar. Let's come.
Amen. You can be seated for just a moment. I want to say again, thank you for being here. I mean that from the depths of my heart. It's so good to see as we begin to try to move forward into this year and, and all that goes with that, and I'm just grateful for you. Let me mention just a couple things and kind of share with you as men. Hello. There we are. Some of the point or another, I turned my mic off in the middle of the sermon, didn't I? I never turned it on. Wow. Okay. There you go. Praise the Lord. I'm Mr. Technical. That's right. Um, you say, oh, Pastor, we didn't know about that revival that being mentioned. I was uh, out and about this week and I saw a family, and there was a family with them that goes to White Creek, and the young lady said, hey, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. The other lady said, where are you going next week? I said, well, I have not shared with y'all because y'all have been a little worried about me and I didn't want y'all to know that I was going to be doing a revival for six days straight. So guess what? I'm going to do doing a revival for six days straight. However, I'll get to rest before. And I'll, we, we, my wife and I have gone through this. So, um, but it's going to be good, so I'm excited about it. Um, I'll be going to White Creek. Uh, Brother Lewis Fortner, um, who's a dear, dear friend, and um, he had asked me to come a little while back, and so uh, they're uh, going tonight at 6 o'clock and then going through Friday night at 7. Uh, I was going to share with you today anyway, but I'm so glad to be able to do that. Um, I'm excited about the opportunity. And I will say, you know, we, we little victories. Um, we were doing a lot of walking around and, um, and did some hills and some stairs this week and came and checked my oxygen, and it was 96, 97. You're verifying that, so that's without my oxygen, so that's amen to God be the glory. Um, but what kills me is vacuuming. Do you know that? So I have to just slack off for a while. I, I realize I'm going to have to go to Dr. Newton and say, this vacuum is dropping my oxygen like crazy. You know what? That's exactly what she said. <laughs> So anyway, I want you to be praying. Um, I have invited um, the teenagers, if they're able to come, kind of back in the day when Court and I first started ministry, uh, we just had a, have always have a teenagers go with us or be there and would go out to eat afterwards. So if they're able to come, I've invited them to come. But you're also invited to come. I want you to come and just going to have a great time tonight at 6 o'clock. Um, so keep that in mind as well. I want to say again, thank you for those that did go to Victory Home. Um, I, I just heard great, great things. Um, one of the men told Carol, said, I haven't laughed this hard, hard sober in a long time. Amen. Isn't that good? So thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody that, that sent food and, and went and ministered. And then also, I want to just say thank you that you didn't even know about this, but Miss Autumn, who had to work today, Miss Autumn Adams, she had to work today, but she's been working with the mission teams. You know, Keith Ivy would work with them, and he's now in a different position with the convention. And so she's been working with the teams as they come in. And one came in this week, and uh, just, they had a great time. But they were ministering at Mossy Acres, I believe it is, Mossy Acres Trailer Park, and um, doing Bible clubs. And the kids, a lot of them didn't have Bibles. So um, Lanier, I was out of town, so Lanier met her up here, and they were able to get Bibles. Some of those that we've been giving the kids, Crystal, the orange ones, she sent pictures to me, and uh, she said they were so excited. Now stay with me. That's White County. And they didn't have a Bible, but because of you, they do now. And because of the ministry of the missions right here in White County that Miss Autumn's a part of, and as we begin to do more, we can do more with them and do more with that. So I'm very excited. I just want to say thank you for that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, may the Lord bless you in that. It's been good to be in God's house. Amen? Amen. And uh, look forward to what God has in store for us in uh, the days ahead. I want you, if you would, just to bow your head with me in a word of prayer. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Roy. Brother Roy, would you close out in a word of prayer today?